we claim that the mean of the dollars that the students spend is now different than 267. So the, let's say if the question is asking like this, can we claim that the mean is now different than 267? And we are going to answer this question with an alpha of uh, 0 .01. Let's, say, um, let's say 5 percent. Level of significant 5 percent. So again, there is a population. We don't know the mean of the population, but there is a claim about the mean of the population. We have taken a sample. What is the sample size? It is 30 students. 13. And based on the mean of the sample, we want to make a judgment about uh, that claim. Now, um, the mu not equal to 267 is the question. We always write the opposite of that claim, which is the mean is 267. And uh, we go from there. Now, between these two hypotheses, the one that has equality is nominal, so we call that one null hypothesis, and uh, the other one is the alternative hypothesis, and then we accept this claim, uh, the null, tentatively. And based on that acceptance of the null, we write down what we know about the possibilities for sample mean. The sample mean we know that has a normal distribution based on central limit theorem. And the mean of all of the sample means is the mean of the population. And the standard deviation of all of the sample means is the standard deviation of the population divided by square root of n. Now, based on our tentative acceptance of the null, we have accepted that the mean is 267. Therefore, uh, all of the things that we are writing here is now based on that acceptance, 267. And, uh, but we don't know the standard deviation. Uh, and because we don't know the standard deviation now, we cannot continue except if Gosset comes to help us and we switch to T distribution with a degree of freedom of 12, N minus 1. Now we can continue and we can use a standard deviation of the sample divided by a square root of N. And if we do that, if you type the mean, uh, all of the numbers in your calc calculator, what is the mean and the standard deviation of our sample? I got 288.31. Two hundred eighty-eight. Yeah. Oh no, wait. I got two eighty-eight point. Oh yeah, you rounded it. I okay, yeah, it. yeah, I got that. Two hundred eighty-eight point. Uh, thirty-one. Thirty-one, and the standard deviation of the sample. Twenty-two. S of x from your calculator. Twenty-two point four six. Uh, four six, yeah. Four six. Okay. So now we can continue, and we use this standard deviation of the sample. Twenty-two point. 4, 6 divided by square root of 13, which is equal to 22.46 divided by, what is the square root of 13? Square root, I got 3.61. 3.61. Oh yeah, okay, I got 6.2. 6.22. 6.22, yeah. 22. So this is the uh, standard deviation of distribution of x bar. Now we will find the rejection areas and then we find out if our, if our observation is close to the claim or that far. So let's think about uh, what are the rejection areas. The claim is that the mean is 267. If we get a mean of 100, can we reject it? very far less than 267. 
But it's not 267. Okay. If we get a mean of 100 in our sample, can we reject the claim? Somebody is claiming that the mean of the population is 267. Mm -hmm. If we take a sample and our sample shows 10, can we reject that claim? Yes. Okay, so some extreme things on this side, if they happen, we can reject the claim. Okay? And if we take a sample and we see that the mean of our sample in instead of 267 is 1000, can we reject the claim? Sure. Yeah. So basically, he has accepted that if something has less than 5% chance of happening, then we can reject his claim. Like if something that has so little chance of happening based on his claim happens, he accepts us rejecting the claim. Therefore, these two areas combined, this area and this area combined, they have 5% chance of happening. These are the rejection areas. If we observe something that is not likely to happen based on the accepted claim, then the accepted claim is not reasonable based on our empirical evidence. Okay, so if we go to, how many tails do you see here? Two. Two tails. So please go to row 12 and find out what are these two T critical points. T critical, two tail, five percent, row for row one, twelve, one. row twelve. 12 and then okay, so now if these two, re the, if our observation ends up to be in these rejection areas, then we will reject them all. Otherwise, we have to suspend our judgment. Okay, so let's find out what is our observation. The T of our observation, uh, our observation is 288. So how many standard deviations? It is far from the mean. Uh, we accepted in the null hypothesis, it is 267. And the standard deviation is 6.22. How far is our observation? 3.43. 43. So we are three standard deviations far from the mean. So what we observe is actually here. This is 1.7, this would be 2, this would be 3, this would be 3.5. So this is the T of our observation, way into the rejection area. So it is rejected. So here we will reject this claim and we will accept, we have to write complete sentences, we reject the claim that the mean is still $267 and we will accept the claim that the mean of all of the students is not equal to $267 anymore.